Hey, welcome to Feel Good Fridays at NECAT, where we talk to people from nonprofit organizations here in Nashville. I'm Cameron McCaslin, NECAT's Director of Content and Member Relations. And joining me today is the NECAT Board Chair, Tyler Pittman. Our guests Hello. today are Sean Bocker and Terry Luke from the National Public Library Foundation, which provides National Public Library with critical support that bridges the gap between public tax dollars and additional funding that is required to offer award-winning programs that empower our community, ignite children's imaginations, and foster lifelong learning. Founded in 1997, the Public-Private Partnership has raised more than $50 million to develop a dynamic library system that provides our neighborhoods with vital opportunities at no cost to participants, cultivating a better future for everyone. Terry and Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Yeah, so tell, just for our audience sake, uh, tell me what you do with the library and the Library Foundation. Uh, I'll start with you, Sean. Yeah, I'm Sean Bacher. I am the president of the Nashville Public Library Foundation. Um, and so what that means is um, our primary purpose is to support um, the Nashville Public Library. Um, and that means everything from um, support financially, um, and we've also started um, some advocacy work to advocate for the library um, within our community. Okay. And Terry? Sure. Hi, I'm Terry Luke and I'm the assistant director for branch services at Nashville Public Library. Um, that means that I get to oversee the services and programs of all of our 20 branches. Okay, awesome. So, Sean, you kind of talked about this there in your intro a little bit, but what is the role of the Nashville Public Library Foundation when it comes to supporting the Nashville Public Library? <laughs> Well, many people may not realize that it takes more than public support through our metro government for us to have the award-winning library that we have here in Nashville. Um, and so it's the public support that pays for our buildings, it pays for our books, and it pays for many of the librarians. Um, but it's the foundation that exists as a separate nonprofit organization to raise private support to ensure that the Nashville Public Library thrives and I like to say is the best civic institution um, in our county. Um, and then, um, as you mentioned, Cameron, we were founded in 1997 um, and we have raised over $50 million in private support to advance the impact and the reach of National Public Library's programs and initiatives. The library is really here truly to serve all and the foundation ensures that there is programming for all. Um, it could be, we like to think about it as really holistic programs. So it's everything from the little bitty kids and it could be the puppet shows, it could be the story times, um, through our school age children, which is um, opportunities that we partner with um, the Metro schools um, through Limitless Libraries programs, making sure that um, all of our public school libraries have access to the full collection um, and that requires some additional funds to make sure that there's enough books to go around to the school libraries but then to make sure all of our branches still have enough books for anybody who would want um, a book. Also then if you think about our teens um, we have maker spaces um, at many of our branches that allow the teens to come in explore technology um, it could be everything from um, recording podcasts to doing um, actually sewing, which I found fascinating. But when you put it in the um, guise of fashion design, it has a totally different um, perspective than sewing did when I'm thinking about my home ec class in ninth grade. Um, so the teens will come um, and have an opportunity to make their own videos, explore virtual reality. Um, and then for adults, the programs continue. Um, and one of the particular things for our seniors, we have a program um, that's making sure that our seniors know how to use technology. Um, it's just digital inclusion for seniors. Um, and so it's kind of runs the whole gamut. Like I said, from the little bitties um, to those um, who are older and our senior population, and so really the foundation gets to make sure we have a lot of the fun stuff, both at our branches um, and out in the community. Right on, I, I know whenever we got into, just started talking about making the show and, and National Public Library being the first guest that we were gonna have on, 
it, it's just so big. You know, there, you guys do so much that it's hard to like block it all into this, this space and say, okay, well, let's talk about everything. But with that, like, t you know, Terry, talk to me a little bit, um, just for the viewers at home, you know, if you're new to Nashville and you're unaware of everything that's going on in the library system, um, talk to me a little bit about, I guess, the history of like NPL and like, you know, what, what the library offers, uh, you know, separate of that or in depth or anything specifically that you love that it's doing or has done. Cause I, I you're, is it 21 branches now? Yeah. 20 branches and the main library. That's crazy. I know it is. Um, well, sure. So that's, um, you know, an interesting question. And I think I'll start with the first part, which is um, talk a little bit about the history because there's a lot of history. So um, in, uh, we actually started library service in Nashville in 1899 uh, when we opened the Howard branch. And then um, library services uh, continued in the early 1900s when um, philanthropist, philanthropist, um, Andrew Carnegie actually donated uh, $250,000, which at that time was a lot, um, to build uh, five additional branches. And two of those branches still exist today in National Public Libraries. Um, we just celebrated 100 years of service over the last five years at both our East Branch and our North Branch. And then even though, you know, we're talking about um, we evolve and change over the last hundred and, you know, plus years, um, our mission in libraries stay the same. And our mission in Nashville Public is to inspire reading, to advance learning, and to connect with our community. And so even in the 1950s and 60s, we were doing that when we started bookmobile service for people who couldn't actually get to the library. Um, we went to them. Then we even had a reading room in the airport. So you know, as we continue to grow and evolve, then um, our, the next big thing for me would be that we opened the main library on Church Street in uh, 2001. And that facility is 300,000 square feet. And so there is just so much that is offered um, out of that facility. Um, and then for me, the next highlight is really because has been on the cutting edge and because we have such a wonderful foundation that actually does provide the fun stuff um, we have been recognized nationally by library journal in 2017 as library of the year and that is truly an honor and it just goes to one library per year so that's to me the first part of the question and the history um, the second part of the question, what I would say about what we have to offer is that I love that question, but the, we have so much to offer that I think what I'm going to try to do is just give you some highlights because obviously, um, you know, people can go to our website and really find out anything that they would like to know. But, you know, the thing that I'm most proud about in joining Nashville Public Libraries is that, you know, while we provide those traditional things that people come to expect from libraries, whether it's um, checking out books or it's a children's story time, uh, DVDs and, you know, music and things like that, the reality is that, you know, Nashville provides things, uh, Nashville Public Library provides things that I don't think that everybody knows. And I'll just highlight a few of those. Um, I'll start with the fact that we have an extensive e-resources collection. So whether you would like to um, download a book, if you would like to see a DVD, you know, something in a DVD, a movie, songs and music, um, our e-collection is there for you. And we've actually expanded it um, during the pandemic. So um, you don't even have to leave your home and you can go ahead and, and access those resources, which has been really critical um, during the pandemic. Um, the other things, though, is that we actually have, um, and again, these things that are funded through the foundation, we have wishing chair production. So we have an entire troop of uh, theater people who they actually will create something from scratch. Um, and but it's based on a book. So we have a wonderful um, you know, collection of productions that um, the main library, um, there are days um, you know, during on Saturday that there can be a thousand people that are waiting to see one of our latest productions. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of our other wonderful things at the main library. We have an award-winning um, 
the uh, civil rights room where we have 10,000 uh, people a year that come to visit the civil rights room and that um, staff actually present a hundred um, plus programs a year in uh, our community, whether it's school students or it's customers who are visiting um, or even the police officers that are going through their training. Uh, so that's there. And then right across the hall now, just in August, uh, we were able to add um, of the votes for women room and again you to our donors and our foundation uh, we were able to celebrate the passing of the 19th amendment and women's rights to vote and actually get, take it further because we celebrate the role that nashville played in passing that amendment um, so there's just uh we also have um our really fortunate to have Metro Archives. So if you need to know about um, the history of Nashville, um, we, we have that at the main library. And um, something I really appreciate is the Library for the Deaf of Heart and Hard of Hearing. And that actually serves the entire state. And um, the person that manages that is just incredible. And the things that people can come in and try, uh, whether it's a you know new phone system for them um, or a new alert system, that's all there and um, so those are just a few of the things but if there's other things that people would like to know about they can definitely go to um, our website and find out more well I was just talking to someone at the library last week about how all the different ways the library has served me over the years and um, mm -hmm. I have two daughters Yay. we've gone down to the to the see the puppet shows I've watched movies down at the main library uh, you know in the theater there um, I'm a documentary filmmaker myself, and I have uh, my last movie. A lot of it, I did. I did a lot of research in both the civil rights room uh, and just looking through catalogs there about the Harlem Globetrotters, basically, and trying to you know to find all that different documentation. And people at the library were so helpful. But then I think about 20 years ago when I first moved to Nashville, and I was still uh, a very young man, and you know just kind of getting started. And I used to live two streets over from the Richland Park branch, and I used to walk mm -hmm. there every day to. Uh, check email and do things like that because I couldn't afford internet access when I was 20 years old and just trying to find a job when I first got here and was basically sleeping on couches until I could get started. Um, the library provided that for me in my life and you know it's like and I think about how throughout the years my needs have changed but the library has always been there for me and so uh, I think that's just it's it's incredible you know just all the different things that you guys do. Um, you touched a little bit on the pandemic and how um, things have changed. Obviously, Feel Good Friday is one of those things where this was uh, built out of the fact that we're all working from home. I'm sitting in my home office, as it seems most of you are right now, and uh, it's a different way for people to watch television. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the pandemic and kind of how, you know, how that has changed the way, you know, things are going for you. So I'll you know, say to you, Sean, like, when it comes to the pandemic, how is it impacting, like, your fundraising and, and things like that for the foundation? And, you know, how are you um, how do you basically doing the projects that you would do in person? I know you guys had a gala that was coming up that obviously it's not safe for us all to be in the same room anymore, but talk to me about how you've pivoted with that yeah. and what you're doing instead of what you had planned to do. Yeah. Um, well, I think pivot is the kind of the word of the year for all of us. Um, and so that has definitely been the case for us as well. Um, the foundation, we raise money in three primary ways. Um, one is from individuals, um, one is from corporations, and the third is from events. Um, and we have found that the individuals and the corporations that have not been directly financially affected by the pandemic have continued to be very generous. Um, I think that does say a lot for our Nashville community of, you know, we've all heard and we all feel so good about the fact that when we're in crisis, we do rise to the occasion. And I think that has been our experience, particularly for those who in this time are able to give. They have continued to give and give generously. Um, there are some people who've had to reduce or put their support on pause for the moment just because they have been personally affected. And we fully understand that. Um, I would say the biggest shift that we have experienced in our fundraising has been a result of our events. And Cameron, you had alluded to that. Um, about a third of our revenue um, comes from our big events. And our biggest event is our gala that we have in the fall. Um, and so um, 
we will be still having it, but it will be a stay at home gala. Um, and so this is our 17th year and I think it's going to be the most unique one we've ever had. Um, and I, for those who have participated in the past, I think they will still find this to be meaningful and memorable. Um, typically, we focus on one author. We bring in a great author um, that speaks um, several times throughout a weekend. Um, they speak um, at two specific fundraising events, but we still have a public lecture um, with that author. Truly in the spirit of the library, we want to make sure everybody has access. You don't have to be able to write a big check to be able to have access to the author. So that's why we have always done the public lecture component when we bring the author in. But this year it's kind of exciting and again trying to think through um, we actually had already arranged for Colson Whitehead um, to be our literary award for 2020 um, and this was before he won his second Pulitzer um, and then when he won his second Pulitzer we're like oh yes we hit the jackpot uh, we got him before I mean obviously he had already won one Pulitzer so it's not that the world didn't know he was great but yet we got him but um, what we decided is let's put a hold on that um, until 2021 because for us we just felt like we would not be able to capture kind of the true essence of Colson in video form um, and um, we wouldn't be having a full weekend of activities so he was um, very gracious and actually I think excited about saying yes it will be best for everybody to wait till 2021 so for those of you who are big colson whitehead fans mark your calendar for november of 2021 because he will be with us um but this year instead we said let's shift and really talk about um our own community and the inspirational library stories you know cameron you shared you shared your story about how 20 years ago for you it, the library was a place where you could go and access um, your email um, and um, yet today now that you have children it's a very the library is a very different experience and so we felt like instead of having just one celebrity author let's talk to the people of nashville and let's hear their stories let's hear their library stories of how the library has made an impact for them um, and so we're going to do that um, with a few surprise guests as well um, that evening of november 14th um, for our stay at home gala um, and so that um, that will continue to take place um, and it is our hope that that will still be a great fundraiser Kind of the, um, as I said, we have such an amazing community that believes in the library. And so even though every, well, not everybody, a lot of people love to get dressed up and come down to the library for a party. Um, I think there are secretly some who are excited to not have to put on their tux or get in their fancy dress. Um, but generally, everybody who has traditionally supported us recognizes, you know what, this isn't going to be us gathering in the beautiful lobby of the library. However, we so believe in the work of the library and we will continue to support it this year. Um, so it's kind of, it's really worked out well in the sense that we can kind of add a different flavor to this year, but also say um, next year we're going to be back and we already know we're going to be back with an amazing author. Um, and so we, I think we're kind of in a sweet spot to be able to celebrate who we have and then look forward to who is going to come with us. I, I know for me, it's one of those things this year where 2020 has been a lot of bad news and um, every day you wake up and you feel like the world is on fire to a certain extent. Um, but I always try to remind myself that I know down the road, you know, once we get to the other side of this, I'm never going to feel bad that I've got to spend a little bit more time at home with my children. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, been able to read some more books and, and, and watch some more things. And the time that yeah, I get the couple hours back that I spend in the car, uh, NECAT is kind of in the same situation where we've been closed for almost six months now on the studio side. And we're trying to help our members uh, make productions at home and, and do things like that. And we're trying to get the word out for our services to them. Um, it, so the pandemic has it's changed things. And I know that it's, it's changed things at the library, but I know you guys are still doing some things there. So, um, Terry, can you tell me just a little bit about how the, how is the library still working? I mean, like, what is, how are you guys getting 
books out to people and how are people still um, taking in all the information that, that you guys provide? Sure, thanks for asking that Cameron because I am so excited that um, and so proud of our library staff and um, they have worked so hard um, to really shift and adapt and you know to if anything this pandemic has taught me it's that you can't keep story times away from our customers so um, <laughs> quickly adapted and our customers and our little toddlers and preschoolers are still able to see their favorite staff member doing story time. So um, we've been uh, doing story times um, online since uh, April. And um, so and not just for children. I mean, we're providing uh, programs for adults and teens, um, including cooking classes and art lessons. Um, all the, our staff have such amazing expertise and in areas that we didn't even know about before. And so um, even our book clubs have shifted uh, to be available online. So um, we haven't just um, done programs, uh, but the other thing is uh, we created a um, something called NPL Universe that is available on our website. So anything that our staff was doing in person at the library is now available online and it's free. So I'm um, really proud of that, you know, whether it's our salon 615s or it's a wishing chair production or it's um, you know a cooking class all of those things are available on NPL universe um, if that wasn't enough um, our staff created book a librarian because what are the things that we let we do for our customers we answer reference questions so um, our customers can either by um, video chat or by phone um, can talk with you know their favorite librarian and a book a time that's convenient for them and they can that online and then um, you know ask whatever question if it's like oh my gosh I, you know I'm getting ready for the zoom meeting and my you know I can't get my Beats headphones to work, I can, you know, ask a librarian. So, um, and aside from that, one of the other things is we're always, you know, um, doing what librarians call readers advisory. But basically what that is, is we've created library concierge. So what you can do is you let us know, we'll create lists for you, um, whether it's lists of, you know, videos in your favorite genre that you're like, I don't know what video to watch anymore. And when you're it's different to browse in the library versus browsing online so we felt like this would be something that our staff could do so we can create a um you know book lists of i've read everything by my favorite author so now what do i want to read and our staff will do that for you if you're a mom and you're trying to homeschool and you're, they're, you know, going through a certain subject in class, you know, we can pull a bundle of books for you. And the nice thing about that is once our staff go to the shelves and they pull those books for you, um, as of June, uh, we actually um, started to offer contactless service. And so what that means is that um, you can go to any of our seven regional branches or our main library and um, we're, av you know, they're available the same hours that we were before the pandemic, which means Monday through Friday, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and you can, you actually put your book on hold or your DVD and then you um, get a notice from us that says, hey, like your book is here. Um, and what you do is you go over to that library where you reserve the hold and you call our staff um, from the curbside parking spaces and they will bring that out to you. Um, so, and I think what people think about is, oh, curbside is just about books. But in reality, um, you know, we've had to shift our summer reading challenge um, remotely and online as well. And so our customers can pick up their summer reading challenge prizes, they can pick up seeds from the seed exchange. You wouldn't be amazed at how many of our customers have missed being able to reserve um, and pick up their seeds for their garden. Because a lot of people, because of the pandemic, are gardening that weren't even gardening before. Um, so there, you know, voter registration forms, um, we're actually even doing free mobile printing. So we do that during reserved hours, but um, you know, just so much. And like I said, I'm so proud of the staff and you know, everything that they've um, been able to do. And so we're looking forward on September 21st uh, to be able to expand those curbside services to our Donaldson branch, our um, Goodlettsville, 
um, Inglewood, and then also um, keeping Thompson Lane open. They've been serving as the curbside pickup for Edmondson Pike Regional Branch because we've been doing a flooring project there. And so we're really happy to be able to expand out in, um, even further into the community. And, you know, we are so appreciative of our customers. They have been, you know, so great about watching online programs and picking up books at curbside, um, but we really do miss them. So a next phase that we're wanting to do is called 1.5, and um, I don't have an exact date for that, um, but we want to open um, at, with reserved time slots, um, computer access at um, designated um, branches and the main library. So, um, so that's what we're doing during the pandemic. That's awesome. I, you know, I'm a bit, I would call myself a library nerd in the sense that I do read quite a bit and I check out movies from you guys. And, and But it's things like Seed Exchange. That's the thing that's like, I haven't personally used that. Uh, but I remember the first time I saw that and I was like, that's incredible. It's like, what a great idea that I don't think people realize it because whenever you think about a library and a librarian, I think there's a stereotypical way people think about it and how that stuff is used. And so whenever yes. you start talking about like, um, we go over to, uh, to Antioch sometimes, whenever, whenever the library is open and my daughter has gone over there and like played video games, you know, with kids and stuff like that before. Like there's stuff that you guys provide that I just don't think people think about it, it being part of the library. So it's, it's good to, to open that up. So let me ask you um, both the question and answer accordingly. So you've got 21 branches of the library. Um, on a personal level, which one is your favorite? Oh, that's so not fair. I'll let yeah, you know. Put first. You on the spot. <laughs> um, I think, oh, so Richland Park, as you said, Cameron, is, um, that's my neighborhood one. So I think, and my husband jokes with me that um, when we first moved to Nashville, I insisted on getting my library card even before I would get my um, driver's license changed. Uh, and, and that was before I worked with the library. Um, and so it was, to me, that's kind of just an anchor. The library is an anchor in one's community. And so because I'm in Richmond Park area, I just feel like that is our anchor. Um, but our offices are actually at Maine. Um, and I think I'm influenced by my kids because they love to go to the big library. And we're at Richland Park frequently, but it's a treat to, can we go to the big library? Um, and that's, um, just with the reading for it, with all the books, with the courtyard, with um, the puppet shows and all of that, it um, feels like it's a truly a field trip for them. And so I guess I'd say both of those. Um, <laughs> And actually, Cameron, I'd have to say that, you know, because of over branch services, what I realized is that, you know, there's um, different things that even though we provide the same services and similar programs, there's different and unique things for each one. So I think it's really hard. But I guess if something, you know, was from my heart, what I would say is that it would be Bellevue. And the reason for that is that I actually worked in Wake County Public Libraries in North Carolina for 32 years. And, um, and then we visited Nashville um, as, as a family over a long weekend and of course the guys were going golfing and I uh, called and said what's your newest library that I can go visit and at the time Bellevue had just opened and so I went there and to see the facility um, it is one of our it's very beautiful and um, you know and the staff to me you can have a beautiful building but if you don't have wonderful customer service then it's just a building and um, they didn't know who I was and you know it, when you went to every different part the library they asked you know for help they asked if i needed help so while i love all of them i would have to say you know bellevue has a special place in my heart so and, and bellevue definitely has the best of the cd collection <laughs> yes. if, if, you, if you like still like looking through cds bellevue is the place to go there's so many of them mm -hmm. there so yes. that's fantastic well tell, let's talk a little bit uh you know here towards the end about how someone can take advantage of all these different programs how do you get a library card Okay, um, so you get a library card right now. Normally, you could come into your, your local library and get your library card. But right now, what we're doing is online registration. So you go to our website and um, and you can get your library card and um, it's free if you're a resident of Davidson County. Um, and then what you can do is actually physically pick it up when you come to curbside to pick up whatever it is that you would like, um, like to, you know, whether it's your book or a DVD or seeds from the seed exchange. That's fantastic. 
Um, so I know for, for you guys, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, library.nashville.org is the, the main website where they can get all that information. Uh, there's more information on the gala there. There's more information on how to get a library card there uh, on all the different fantastic programs that are going on. Is there anything that we missed that you guys just want to want to drop on here at the end? Just let people know at home what, you know, what they're missing? Yeah, if I can just add one quick thing. Um, so the foundation actually has a separate website. Um, so that's NPLF.org. So National Public Library Foundation.org, NPLF.org. And we, um, we've talked a little bit about your library story. We would love to hear what your library story is so that we can share them with the public, um, particularly for our gala and for our public lecture this year. Um, and so if you go to NPLF.org, um, there is a place there where you can um, submit your own library story. Um, and we, like I said, right now we're just working to collect those. So we'd love to hear from many of you. Um, Cameron, I would encourage you to go and share over the past yes. 20 years how your library story has changed. Um, but I am convinced that we all have a library story um, and we just love hearing what those are. That's right. Okay, this is, and if I could just chime in for one second. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, all, all the information you guys have, 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 have touched upon is only just a tip of the iceberg. Uh, I, I, we're going to post all those links um, at the bottom of this video. Uh, we're going to encourage our members to do those stories. Uh, I, I personally, you know, would say that um, this is a big month for civil rights, um, for both the women's suffrage. Uh, today, I believe, is the 65th anniversary of Emmett Till. And you're know, talking about that civil rights wing. Um, the library here in this town, especially the main branch, is... Uh, I think second to none. Um, we are we are so excited um, that we can actually have this time with you and um, be able to also broadcast some of this content that you have on our on our channels. Um, and for you guys to be part of this Feel Good Friday is uh, just a wonderful a wonderful thing. And uh, I just personally wanted to thank you from as as chair of NECAT. Uh, just thank you so much for what you do and for being able to be on here today. Well, thank you for letting us share our story. We appreciate. It. So uh, the great thing about Feel Good Friday, so we're, we're doing a, uh, just trying to fundraise right now for both NECAT and every week we're picking a different nonprofit. This week it is the Nashville Public Library Foundation. So any money that we raise this week uh, through our website, NECATnetwork.org or our GoFundMe that is running right now uh, via all the Facebook. If you're watching this online, it's probably in the links below. Uh, you can donate there. Half the money will go to NECAT to help support our users and half of it is going to go to the National Public Library Foundation to support all the wonderful programs going on over there. So we encourage everyone to get the word out, share the video, and just let people know uh, how they can support, you know, things that are going on in their community. So thank you both for coming on. I said we've enjoyed this so much. And if there's anything we can do over at NECAT to help support this, let us know. We'd be uh, happy to have you guys on again to talk about what things look like a couple months from now whenever we get, let's say, to the other side of the Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. It was awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.